Cast iron pieces can last a long time and be a great asset in the kitchen. This piece is almost as old as I am. We won't talk about how old that is. And it has at least another generation to live. They don't make things like that anymore. But did you know that there are different kinds of cast iron? Today we're talking all about how to choose, care for, and cook with enameled cast iron. Let's check it out. Hi, I'm Carolyn from Homesteading Family, and if you want to learn more about simple and self-sufficient living, click the subscribe button below, and don't forget to turn your notifications on. You guys know I love my traditional cast iron. I use my Stargazer skillet nearly constantly. In fact, it just lives out on the stove. But when it comes to choosing cast iron pieces, enameled cast iron like this one can actually have some really great benefits. So let's talk about those. Number one, it does not require seasoning. Yay, the enamel coating on the inside acts like a seasoning that always stays in shape. So you don't have to season it. Number two, because it has this great enamel glass coating on the inside, it means that you can cook anything in it and you're not going to damage it. You can cook things like really acidic tomato sauces, things like that, and it's not gonna damage it. Now with one caveat that we'll discuss in a few minutes, it will not rust. Unlike traditional cast iron, you can even soak enameled cast iron without worrying about it becoming rusty. Yay for stuck on food. Enameled cast iron is really versatile. It can be used to bake, boil, broil, saute, cook, marinate, and even refrigerate foods in. Technically, it's dishwasher safe, but I really wouldn't recommend sticking it into your dishwasher. It is resistant to both alkaline and acidic foods. But let's be real. The real benefit of all of the enameled cast iron is all of the pretty colors that are out there. <laughs> I love all the bright colors in my kitchen and it's a lot of fun to get to choose from them. Okay, so let's talk about the different options that are out there when you're looking to purchase enameled cast iron. First of all, you have something like a lodge. It's inexpensive compared to other cast iron. It has a really nice range of color options, lots of nice different pieces and you know, it's a really good basic cast iron piece. It's a little bit heavier than your fancier cast iron, your more expensive cast iron, but the real downside to this, they're all made in China. Then you have other pieces made in China. You can find them all over the place on Amazon or in a lot of big box stores. And they're just off name brands that are actually made in China. Again, they have a lot of choices for different types of cast iron for different you know skillets versus bakers versus dutch ovens and they have a lot of great colors but the quality can vary a whole lot so make sure you're really careful if you're looking at one of those then you have something like your la crusades and your stobs these are actually made in france but they are way way more expensive than your lodge option so so is there any reason to buy the expensive stuff besides just buying and paying for the name associated with it? Well, with the French made products, you're getting a much higher standard. You know what you are getting. And since every single piece is inspected, you also know you're gonna get something of really great quality. At the end of the day, the best answer is to do your research and get the best quality that you can afford. I have some Lodge and I have some Le Creuset. And let me tell you, they both perform really well in the kitchen. Let's talk about some things to keep in mind when you're using enameled cast iron. Again, remember, they're not seasoned. So being that they're not seasoned and you don't have to maintain the seasoning, it does also mean that they do not have the non-stick quality of a really well seasoned traditional cast iron pan, which means that you really do need to use oil whenever you're cooking with it. Food may stick to the pan if you cook on it without oil or if you use really high heat. So it's really much better for enameled cast iron if you use low or medium heat. Now when you're searing meat or something that requires really high heat, make sure you start your pan off on really low heat and gradually raise the temperature. 
That's so that you don't damage your enamel coating on the inside. Now, unlike pre-season traditional cast iron, the porcelain coating can be damaged. So make sure that you do not drop or bang around your cookware because it will get broken. Be careful with it when it's inside your cabinet. Don't bang it around real hard and certainly don't drop things into one another when you go to stack them. As long as you're careful and you're not real abrupt with it, it should be fine. It's not super delicate, but it can be damaged and damaging it does essentially ruin the pan. Again, along with that, the inside of the pan can chip if you use metal utensils like tongs or turners or spoons. So make sure you only use wooden or nylon or silicone utensils, something that's soft and won't scratch or damage it. It's really important to never heat an empty enameled cast iron skillet too hot. Unlike a regular traditional cast iron skillet, which can be preheated all the way up to a searing heat, an empty enameled skillet could get totally damaged if you preheat it too hot. So avoid using enameled cast iron skillets for anything that calls for preheating the skillet to a really high temperature before you're adding ingredients. The exception to that is, is that if you are preheating in an oven, it slowly heats it up which is absolutely fine and really good news for bread bakers out there who like to use their Dutch ovens to make really good artisanal loaves of bread. Let's talk about caring for your enameled cast iron. First of all, how do you clean it? Well, clean your cooled, that's important, make sure it's cooled, enameled cast iron with warm soapy water just like you would any other dishes. Again, I really don't recommend that you stick it into the dishwasher, even though some of them say right on there that they're dishwasher safe. After you clean it, make sure you dry your cookware completely and then go ahead and store it in a cabinet just like you normally would. My guess is you're gonna love seeing it sit out so much that you'll just let it live right on your stove top, just like I do. I love having these things sitting out in the kitchen. They just make the kitchen so cheery looking. Now with enamel of cast iron, a small amount of staining is to be expected as it gets used. You can see this one that's been used for many, many years. It doesn't affect the performance and I think it adds a ton of character. There are all sorts of tricks out there to remove the stains, but who wants to take away its history? I say leave the stains on, but if you really want to remove the stains, you would use a gentle ceramic cleaner, like a barkeeper's friend or something like that, and, and scrub gently and try and remove it. Never use something like a Brillo pad on the scratchy side or steel wool on your enamel cast iron. You don't want to ruin that coating. If you have food that's really stuck on after cooking, maybe you cooked at too high of a temperature, you can remove that food by boiling two cups of water and four tablespoons of baking soda in your cast iron pan. Boil it for a few minutes, then use a wooden spoon or spatula to loosen up the food and proceed to wash it as normal with warm soapy water and dry it before you put it away. Now, it is really important to store that enameled cast iron totally dry. The reason for it is are these little rims right around the edges, both on the tops and the bottoms of your pans. These can rust and they will rust if you put them into a cabinet wet or if you let them sit wet too long. So it's best to make sure it's completely dry when you put it away and then every so often go ahead and just oil this rim and this rim right here to make sure you protect it from getting any rust on it. And again, remember when you store it, be gentle with it because it can chip. All right, let's talk about the important part here and that is cooking with your enameled cast iron. Now remember you can broil, boil, bake, Cook, saute, braise, probably just about anything else with your enameled cookware. There are all sorts of options for different types of cookware that you can buy. I'm coming from skillets to small saucepans to larger cooking pans and all the way up to these great big Dutch ovens, which are absolutely beautiful. And you can roast whole chickens or pieces of meat in here, make stews, all sorts of amazing things. Choose the right size for the food that you're going to cook because you don't want to have a whole lot of extra pan that's not being used. Meaning 
If you're just gonna cook an egg, you don't really wanna use this. You wanna use something that's the appropriate size so you don't waste all of the heating that it takes to heat up a cast iron pan. When you go to cook with your pan, start it out on low or medium heat. You can lightly preheat it, but make sure you're not preheating it to hot. Now remember, without the seasoning, you have to make sure to add some oil or fat to the pan every time you cook anything that is dry and not liquidy like a broth based. Unlike traditional cast iron, you can cook acidic foods. You can even store acidic foods. Things like tomato sauces and vinegar brines. You can store them right in the refrigerator in your cast iron, which is a great benefit and is very different than traditional cast iron pans. So don't feel like you have to be held back by the type of food that you're cooking. Now again, if you wanna actually sear something, start by preheating it on low and then slowly turn it up. Don't just crank it all the way to high right at the beginning. Enameled cast iron will last for generations if you take good care of it and you use it well, and it's gonna be a wonderful asset in your kitchen. But another option is to use traditional non-enameled cast iron. If you wanna know more about that, check out this video right here.